In this video, I'll be talking about intravenous anesthetics. There are about five types that we have to know, and they are barbs, benzo, ketamine, opiates, and propofol. Okay, so let's talk about barbiturates first. One common example of uh, barbs as an anesthetic would be thiopental. There is also phenobarbital. Let's take thiopental for an example. This is an anesthetic which has high potency, high lipid solubility. Oftentimes it is used to induce anesthesia. Thiopental is also used uh, for short surgical procedures, it's an anesthetic for short surgical pr procedure. So it's not only used for induction of anesthesia, but it's also used for short surgical procedures. Other than these general things that we know about thiopental, what is interesting is that thiopental has high lipid solubility. It also has rapid entry in the brain. Let me tell you why these two things are so important. So let's say you have a patient who is obese and obviously an obese person is going to have a lot of fat in their body. So you want to, you know, take that into account before anesthetizing uh, an obese patient with an intravenous anesthetic that that person has a lot of fat and they're going to take in so much of the anesthetic and they they it they will it will take them longer to come out of the anesthesia because the lipid solubility is going to trap that anesthetic right so whenever you're taking a, a you know history and physical for a patient who's about to go into surgery you want to make sure that you know okay this patient's weight take that into consideration and all those things comes important clinic clinically in that sense what about rapid entry into the brain brain well if there is rapid entry into the brain then you want to look for you know if you're taking a history of a patient you should be thinking of okay well this patient does this patient has a history of seizures because barbs can be used for the history of seizures right it can be used it's a uh, phenobarbital is one of the drugs used for seizures so rapid into the int entry into the brain so uh, whether when you're debating should I, should I give this drug to this patient or that drug to this patient if they have a history of seizures you know it's going to help both preventing seizures and as an intravenous anesthetic so it's it's there's a double dose of goodness there um, so that's how it's kind of relevant relevant clinically and last of all I want to mention that um, thiopental also helps to decrease cerebral blood flow now I want to pose you the question right here is that which other intravenous anesthetic is going to increase cerebral blood flow the other one which is going to increase cerebral blood flow which is also an intravenous anesthetic is going to be ketamine there is also an inhaled anesthetic which is uh, inhale anesthetic also is going to increase cerebral blood flow so inhale anesthetic in increases cerebral blood flow ketamine increases cerebral blood flow but um, barbs is going to decrease cerebral blood flow okay so that's also important so to summarize everything uh, phenol not only phenobarbital or barbiturates are going to be high potency it's going to have high lipid solubility there's going to be in, it's used for induction of anesthesia it's used as an anesthetic for short surgical procedures it's going to decrease cerebral blood flow and there is going to be a rapid entry in the brain